Well, I think we can start. Uh, welcome to the session about Java Mission Control uh, set of tools. Uh, my name is Anani Sebegovic. I work for Country Software, uh, the part of Country Group. Um, we mostly do in-house projects and several projects with our partners. Most of those projects, almost all those projects are Java-based enterprise projects, but not on Java Enterprise Edition, mostly on Java Standard Edition. And since we are working large projects, we often encounter situations that cannot be resolved by just looking at uh, logs, uh, Grafana or something like that. We need to deep. We need to go deeper inside the what application does and how it behaves. Uh, so for that, we use uh, sometimes Java Mission Control, and I did use it a lot in previous companies where I worked. Uh, there were also Java-based enterprise projects. So let's get s just a couple of uh, formations, and then I'll demonstrate the application. Uh, so, Java Mission Control is present inside the development uh, kit of Java for Java since Java 7 update 14. It was meant to be replaced, uh, meant to replace Java Rocket, and it contains two parts: uh, JMX console uh, and flight recorder. Uh, what pe why people mostly use JMC rather than other other profile tools is exactly flight recorder. Uh, and it's free for testing, for development, but it requires a license for the production, so commercial license for the production. But rumors on internet says that, that Oracle will not enforce, for most cases, the uh, commercial license for the production, so from time to time you can use it in production too. And the the good thing about the JMC is that its overhead is quite low. I mean, it's tend to be even less than 1%, but in some cases it can spike a little bit, especially when you are doing uh, the thread dump or something like that. And, well, this is meant to be for 99% of cases, but if you tweak uh, sampling, for smaller samples, for smaller times, it can spike even larger, but it's recommended mostly to use the recommended sampling times. So uh, one more good thing about the, especially about flight recorder, is allows custom, uh, custom uh, new custom items that you can create for whatever reason you need, beside the ones that provided by either uh, Java or some uh, some some of the plugins you can also install. Uh, you can also make your own. So one thing is, you need as I said, this requires commercial license. So means you need to uh, unlock it with this flag. And in order to unlock the uh, possibility for flight recorder, you need to use the second bar, second flag. And when it comes to the application, you can also add. These parameters, uh, these flags, were starting the application. Uh, previous, pr previous versions of Java required this at the start of the application, but I'm not sure if from which update uh, of Java this can be done uh, during the run runtime. So that's pretty much about the introduction. So I will now demonstrate the application. Uh, by application, I mean the Jamish control based on the Eclipse. Uh, you can also start it from Eclipse, or you can uh, run it uh, separately. It's provided when you download the uh, uh, SDK. Uh, so, okay, this is uh, when you open the JMC. Uh, this is what you get at the start. Uh, so, in order to uh, connect to s locally or on remote server, you can add new connection, define the host port, and if you have certain uh, uh, credentials, you can add here and just do so. Uh, I shouldn't do, do that. Okay. Uh, and also you can save the connection. You can also place them in certain folders so you can organize your uh, playground here. Uh, regarding lo uh, 
applications that are running on your local machine when you are running the this console, uh, it will detect uh, all the application present there that are open for the GMC, and you can start it looking uh, whatever application you want. As I said, there are two things: James uh, JMX uh, co uh, console or MB server and flight recorder. So I will start for now with MB server, which is something that contains. No, uh, but contains most of the profiles for Java, as Visual M, VM, and G consoles, whatever. And first thing you, when you open this, you can see the dashboards and some uh, graphs. Uh, for start, you you, uh, you have the processor memory graphs and some heap memory uh, dashboards. Uh, that's under the overview uh, uh, tab. And in the second tab uh, on MB uh, browser, uh, you can see actually whatever is enabled f uh, for, for the JMC inside that application or whatever is has that of the management bin. Uh, most of them are actually Java, Java MB beans, uh, like under the Java Lang or Java Neo or uh, logging, and if you are using something additional, some other libraries, containers uh, that contains some mbeans, uh, they will be visible here. Or you can also uh, add your own, uh, create your own mbeans inside your application or some library that you included inside your application, and they will be uh, available here. Uh, as you can see here on this uh, tab, uh, this is mostly standard uh, showcase where you have the list of the uh, of the of the ambience and when you open certain ambience you can then see its attributes operation application metadata etc uh, most interesting things are actually attributes that are given through that uh, MB or, or what are defined inside that MB as getter set setters and there are certain operations. Let me see, maybe not this one. This one work here. Inside memory, for example, you can start garbage collector. Actually, tell garbage co collector to start. Uh, so besides just viewing certain things, you can also uh, start certain operations inside me. So it's not one way, it's two way. As I said, you can also create your own. For example, I created one here. Uh, how to create that one? Um, so pretty much since I have here Spring-based uh, application, Spring Boot-based application, so it's most easily to, to create that. One of the most important things is that it has to have MB uh, inside the name at the end. Uh, can you see, everyone? OK, so it has the MB on the end of the name. Uh, you can also create interfaces and uh, implementations, but uh, with this annotations uh, match resource, you can just use it as class without the uh, interface. And only uh, you can then define the f uh, folder inside that will be shown inside the James console or uh, uh, MB server and the na name of this MB. Um, and then you define the operations and attributes. Um, that's mm, some basic, um, basic MB. And then, of course, you can see them here. Uh, and another thing is inside the overview tab, you can actually use those uh, custom created MBs to create certain dashboards or uh, graphs. So let's see. Let's create another graph that will use this one, which presents actually the number of uh, uh, number of data inside the database uh, inside the table uh, user. So it pretty much now should show, but I currently don't have no data. Let me see. So let's add some users and will start adding users. So this is something that shows currently what's going on inside your application. 
Uh, the only thing that actually has history here is this overview tab, and most of other things are just live stuff. So same value source, same numbers you can see here that uh, that are currently uh, placed by your application. Um, and you can set up also the update interval. Uh, default means usually one second, I believe. And you can define it to use once, or you can by yourself define the interval. When will this be sampled? This means also if something happens and is not recorded by the sampling, it will be not it will not be shown here. So, uh, based on operations you we want to monitor, you need to also decide what is the best sampling or sampling inter update interval. Uh, another good thing about the uh, GMC is this uh, under th those triggers. Uh, these ones are default. And when you have WebLogic server plugin for the JMC, you can also have certain things from WebLogic. And uh, pretty much what can be done here is if you select certain uh, certain trigger, you can define rules um, when those triggers will happen. Like, okay, here shows current values, and you okay, we want to like trigger this uh, this tr uh, triggers certain event if it goes above 50 uh, percent in let's say 10 seconds for 10 seconds it goes over uh, it stays over the 50 percent if it's sampled by each is sampled each second and then you define certain action you can just have certain pop-up or you can print inside the uh, console or you can send email you can Save it in file, and maybe the, uh, the most useful thing is actually to start flight recording. Um, okay, so what time is okay, we have 15 minutes. I will skip the example. Um, and the next tab is system information. So it just give basic information of the system where this application is run. Then you have the uh, uh, the memory tab where it's the f uh, correctly not present. Showing the uh, heap, heap uh, the what's present in heap, but it pr uh, shows you here uh, data on the percentage of usage of certain uh, spaces inside the memory, and so as you can see, pretty much a lot of a lot of survive space memory is used, which could say that some there are some memory leaks. Uh, but uh, next tab is about threads, so you can see here the current threads r uh, running inside the applications and the uh, state. So you can monitor see to see if there are, s no, let me see, currently no, no blockers. So you can see here is there is some, some are blocking something and you can also see the stack trace of that thread. Uh, okay, and you have these diagnostic commands default from the Java and you can s run certain operations those threads one will cause a uh, lot of overhead and can influence the uh, performance of applications so it's advised that you don't use that often um, one of most all oh okay so you can here also start garbage collector here or print threads or like that uh, that's pretty much about the uh, management beans uh, server or James Emix console. So you, here you can monitor your application, what's currently going on there. And now let's see what flight recorder has. Uh, I previously prepared uh, certain file, uh, certain recording. Uh, also, uh, one good thing about this, uh, okay, actually, let me show you here. Um, as I said, newer version, I'm I run I run this JMC based on uh, given inside uh, in uh, Java 9 update 4, so it can start. You can add those flags, or you can start the commercial features in runtime. So we just click yes, and you have here uh, that um, certain stuff you can define here. Certain stuff like which file to save uh, under which name, how 
point you want to record record and you can set up certain uh, uh, certain uh, like um, uh, certain borders like you don't want to have file larger than a certain size uh, or you don't want uh, data that are all of than certain time if you are continuously recording uh, and you can change the sampling uh, values like we want to perform thread dumps every second which will cause some problems for applications so better to use every 60 seconds and you can define a certain mo couple of more things and you can then start the flight recorder when it's finished you get something like this uh, starting from Mission Control version 6, you have this automated analysis results that will actually point out, or will do certain analysis for you and point out certain problems. In previous version, you, you will need to look around in order to figure out what is, uh, what's most problematic uh, from the data, but this one is quite neat view. Uh, also quite interesting from uh, version 6, uh, there are less features inside the flight recorder than in previous ones. Uh, I think the last one was 5.5 before that one. Since they declared that there are some bugs inside certain functionalities and they are fixing it, so uh, we hope that it will be back inside 6.1. Uh, okay, so pretty much if something is green, that means it's uh, quite okay, but certain things will be red or orange. So, like we have too many threads, or pressure for GC is too high. That means we have too many data inside heap. Too we generate too much uh, heap data, or so you need to look around what's going on there. So, this is first stop for to look around and see so you can focus on what could be a problematic. So what does uh, Flight Recorder has, shows? Uh, since version 6 today also changed a lot uh, about the design of Flight Recorder, so now the tabs are on right instead of previously uh, under. So we have like three parts beside the analysis results, so about the application, about uh, GFME, G, uh, uh, virtual machine, and about environment where it's running. So inside memory, your inside memory tab, you have a list of uh, like analysis of heap dump or, or analysis of heap. So you can see which objects, which classes are have been uh, used mostly or initialized mostly. You can see how much. Uh, the, um, when recording has finished, how many of them were live, uh, how many space it contains, uh, uh, it uh, allocates, and yeah, true time. So uh, I think I recorded this for like 20 minutes. So inside that, there were like 34 gig gigabytes of uh, char arrays. So that means I have some memory leaks for some reason. So I should investigate that. Uh, first time when I used this, uh, this uh, G GMC was actually because of uh, memory leak. So we had this very large uh, monolith application that was most, that was intended to be like microservice, but grew very large. There are like thousands of classes, uh, around 200 controllers for APIs, so pretty large monolith, which was a caching service on top of, uh, I think, 20 or 30 databases in five uh, data centers. So you can see that uh, it sh uh, should cache a lot of data. It was around somewhere around 20 to 30 gigabytes of data for caching. And OK, when an application starts, it loads around 18 megabyte, uh, gigabytes of data, and after three or four days, it will just crash because it will take all available uh, RAM memory, around 
32 gigabytes, I believe it was the uh, limit for it. And so we couldn't figure out what's the problem from the logs, from the Grafana. We tried, I mean, checking the code, everything seemed fine. But and then we start using uh, GMC and we recorded whenever the uh, memory would approach uh, like somewhere about 26 uh, gigabytes and we recorded what's going on, on there. So then we figured out there's a lot of strings create, uh, created or in the, um, um, and behind the string is actually char array. And we start analyzing which array is there and it leads us to the Hibernate because it's uh, by default Hibernate version free used uh, uh, is, uh, uh, used its own cache for the SQLs. Uh, it has had uh, its own uh, cache for SQLs and for cache everything, every uh, SQL. It turned out we had wrongly created SQLs for when we had timestamps inside the uh, filtering. So each time, each time we use or would like select certain data that were like Two, old, uh, two days uh, older, that me meant that uh, each call, and we had around two or three thousand calls per minute, that means for every that uh, every that call or every call to database, it Hibernate will cache that uh, as well, expecting that it'll be uh, called again. So over the time, just populate the heap space, and the application crashes. So that was one situation, first situation when this helped, um, for something that we couldn't figure out from the code uh, immediately and from the uh, logs. So, uh, uh, also it's great for the, another example when we had used this was the ch uh, chat analysis, so it will show you uh, when it records the times, it will sh uh, record the locking uh, and will show which uh, which thread locks and other threads, when, why, and uh, and uh, uh, impact on other items. And that impact you can do by selecting a certain title. Let's say, uh, actually better to use memory here. So for example, we have spike for the allocation, or maybe here, like memory usage. We can select a certain range and say, I want to uh, focus on this selection and it will go up here. And now everything you go around is uh, in flight recorder, in all tabs, it will show items only related to that, that time period. Or if you want certain, uh, let's say I uh, had certain input output operations for file, if I select that file, I will see everything. Uh, actually, I this by default, it selects the uh, end time, but I want to see that related from this thread. So there was some reference uh, locking for that input output operation for file. And uh, then I can, I believe one of the things that they uh, deleted for this version, I believe they have some bugs, is the full stack trace for it, so for the thread. So I hope they will bring back because it was very useful. Um, another thing about uh, about the stack traces, it's always recommended uh, if, if you are using, uh, so, uh, I mean, if you want certain d uh, deeper understanding of threads, it's always recommended that you add certain custom made uh, custom made MBs that will show certain. Uh, data flow inside that thread, so you can expose it here, and it will uh, make certain, uh, you can, in that case, make connections with the thread, so when you select certain thread, it will show you that information uh, connected to that thread, so. Uh, also, one of the things that handles very neatly is are the exceptions. So you uh, you have here the list of all exceptions happened during the recording, or at least that he managed to sample. Uh, also, you can select a certain thing, and you see you can see everything related. Uh, okay, there were no file reading related to that uh, exception. Uh, maybe I can show you. 
uh, for some reason should show certain class, but it doesn't. It still has problem with this new version 6, but hoping 6.1 will come uh, soon. And um, here we, ha uh, we have the thread dump. Be, uh, in previous version, we will just show the stuck, tr st stuck traces, but now it just shows a um, little bit better. So it have you have this selection here, and then you can get to the stuck trace. OK, <laughs> jumping to the JVM. Um, you have here garbage col uh, collection issues. We also had certain problems with garbage collector ones. And when we analyze things, we could not uh, figure out which garbage, because we use several garbage collectors for certain part of heaps. So we could see which one caused problems with the memory, with the uh, CPU overload, etc. So quite has good things about that. And rest are pretty much basic data. So we'll skip that since we are pretty much run, uh, running out of times. We have two minutes, right? And so, yep. Uh, I mean, it's not something that you will probably use every day, but it's quite good when it comes to solving certain problems, certain application behaviors. Uh, I often use it when we start certain new service or uh, we expand existing service with larger functionalities. I often use this light code in order to see how it behaves, will it cause problems, and we manage to, in multiple of times, to uh, prevent certain issues, especially with uh, logs and the memory leaks, just by w watching what is going on, and so you could see the graphs going up over the time. We knew where to intervene before even create certain problems. So it's quite good uh, good stuff, very useful. Uh, it has certain things better than other profiles, but it still needs certain, certain features. But as I said, you can create your own cert uh, features. I sp because I'm mostly working in the backend, uh, back and that means I handle a lot of caching systems, so I often write like certain analyzer for the uh, cache, like counting or usage or something like that, and allocation inside the memory. So it's very customizable. You can customize it pretty good. So that's pretty much that. Since I usually lecture about this like for hour or hour the half because uh, hour and half because it has very a lot of items here and it changes a lot over the time. Sometimes they delete something, sometimes they add something. It's same with other profiles and recently read about ch incoming changes for visual VM. There will be a lot of changes there, so it's quite useful. So thank you very much for attention. So any questions? The, does, did any, uh, any one of you use GMC? Or any other profiler. So, did you? Did it helped? <laughs> uh, flight recorder is the first. Mention. Probably the only one that you need to mention. But uh, for the MP browser, it's pretty much the same because both are of them are on top of the uh, Java management extensions. So. I'm not sure. I didn't use a Visual VM for two years or something like that. So I'm not sure about customization, how it handles customizations. Yeah, okay. And then that's so pretty much the same in that field. But Flight Recorder is the sole advantage of GMC. And the fact that it's developed by s pretty much the same people who developed Java. So if there's certain new functionalities in the, uh, the Java, it uh, this is the place it will be shown first. And one also thing, uh, uh, when you are running this G and GMC, you can also run it Eclipse because it's on top of Eclipse. So when you are running that, uh, the functionalities that it will show you will be mostly based on the 
uh, Java that you installed on your machine where you're running it, but it can also sample older and newer versions of Java in the server where you are sampling it. So, okay, if no questions, thank you very much.